Home box office takes no responsibility for the program you are about to see. The references to real persons or places or statements offensive to the sensibilities of our viewers have been made without the knowledge or authorizations of HBO. All complaints should be addressed directly to the management of the National Lampoon. Late delivery of Disco Beaver from outer space, allowing no time for pre-broadcast viewing by HBO, constitutes a breach of contract and absolves home box office of any liability whatsoever. Oh, yeah! Hey, honey, it's beginning. You better get in here. I'll be in in a minute. All right, but just don't ask me to explain to you what you missed. I miss? Uh, I don't know. This big wooden spaceship or something landed, and then this beaver got out of it. Beaver? Yeah, beaver. God, this. A curious craft appears suddenly in the thermal inversion above a large American city. Its only passenger, a beaver from beyond the stars. Guided, perhaps, by the unseen paw of destiny, the beaver's craft is floated for eons from galaxy to galaxy, coming to rest at last on the fragile surface of this green, watery planet in a little-known corner of the universe. What is the beaver's mission? Why has he been brought here? We shall see. In this jungle of steel and stone, can the beaver find sustenance? Can he survive in this new and friendless world? The natives seem unwilling to share the one substance vital to the beaver's survival, wood. Come back here with that, you scurvy bones rat! Wandering inland from the bleak waterfront, the beaver chances upon objects which resemble his distant planet's rarest delicacies. Hunger and desperation force the decent and law-abiding beaver to desecrate a sacred shrine of the people of this planet. How will the beaver survive? Is there a plan? What mission? Hey, don't change the channel. I was watching that. I want to watch Roots. Well, I'll tell you what happens at the end of Roots. Jimmy Carter revokes the Emancipation Proclamation. Hey, stop right there. Oh, no, not a horror movie. From deep within the bottomless pit of time, from the very bowels of eternity, from the dark uncharted caverns of the nether regions, an infernal power stirs, marshalling the unnamed forces of an undying evil bent on the damnation of its doomed and unwitting pride. Mercy, I'm famished. Please, not... I love New York. I... The little town of Gotham sleeps peacefully beside the gentle Hudson, all unaware of the fate that awaits it at the lips of that sibilant succubus, Perganus, queen of the velvet underground, Dragula. Mm. Mucho. 
macho, macho man. I love him. Thank you, punch press. Budweiser. Whack a deck. Time and a half. Iwo Jima. What the fuck's keeping you? I got a fucking lug nut in my fucking work boot. I'll be right the fuck with you. Fucking friend. Hi, sweetie. Need a hand? Fuck off, you fucking fruit. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Oh, yeah? I feel pretty. <sighs> Say to it, let's hit the bands. Ooh, lovely. I'll call the other girls. Well, the boys just couldn't keep their hands off one another out there in the first period, folks, as these highlights show. And there were more biting penalties than ever before in league history. Stay tuned for our between-period interview. Our guest is goaltender Chico Ball Duke, who has something to tell us about a, a new mask he's been uh, planning on wearing in the second period. He, he claims it's just adorable. And he goes, It is adorable, Chico. Tell me about the locker room. I bet it's an utter orgy in there. What those guys get up to in there, you wouldn't honestly believe. Oh, good. Quick, change it before the commercial. His Holiness Pope John Paul, the first Polish pontiff, is a man of the people. He prides himself on performing his own domestic chores. Smut! Police officer! Police cops! Up against the wall! Don't move! Hands in the air! Uh, hey, let's get back to that beaver over. thing. I want to see what Cross that was all about. Hockey. A steal by oh, 40. He clears it all the way down. Hockey. Hockey. No. Out there now what, what was that girl? 40. Come on, go back to the girl. I knew that a lot of friends of mine, with some of my so-called friends, had been using Perrier, and they were always saying things to me like, um, uh, have a Perrier, or how about a Perrier and lime? And um, they were always trying to get me into it. And there was a lot of peer group pressure, I guess. And then uh, one day I was just at a party, and I was talking to a guy, you know, and he said to me, um, can I get you Perrier or something? And I said, yeah, okay. Um, I figured I could handle it. I guess that's what everybody thinks. And before I knew it, I was like up to, uh, oh, about six glasses of Perrier, you know, bottles a day. And I would, first thing I'd do in the morning would be like light a cigarette and have a Perrier, you know? And uh, then I just sort of naturally started getting into salads. And it was like, you know, mug beans and uh, tofu, you know? I mean, the whole sick organic trip, you know what I'm saying? Powering you know. his way on right wing control, taken out of a play oh, by a 40. Let's see if there's anything on the table. Thank you very much. 
the Islanders have killed Not the penalty. Gillies is out of the box. And he's has this he has this like enormous vial of Perrier, right? And he hey, give me a says, break. Huh? Let's go back to the beaver. Drink this. After days of wandering, the beaver discovers a zone of the city not unlike the woods and dales of his distant home. <laughs> In this place of refuge from the city, the beaver communicates at last with the natives proving that the language of beaver knows no boundaries of time or space. Oh, why, he's a nice beaver. Say hello to the nice beaver, Miss Holmes. Hello. It's a beautiful, beautiful cousin. Oh, you know, my cousin that was to show how the cubs very much like this one. Hey, you're cute. Well, he's almost like the back in a wolf. You know, we'll get a nice cup of hot water somewhere. Come, darling. All too soon, the beaver discovers that not all the natives of this planet are friendly. Don't get no hero, man. Give me your money. Give me your money, man. Come on. Get, get out of here. Come on. Fucking Canadian money. The beaver does not understand that the abundant natural food supplies on this planet are not anyone's for the taking. You there. Stop that. Stop it now. What do you think you're doing? Who do you think you are? You disco beavers from outer space think you can come down here and eat our bark, destroy our trees, ruin our ecology. Stop it now. Do you hear me? Stop it. Go away. Now, go. Move it. Go on. Do you hear me? Go. Go. Go on. Come on, move. Put that down. Put it down now. Where is your leash anyway? Come on, honey. It's time for Mr. Peace Theater. Mr. Peace Theater is made possible by a grant from the Donaldson Corporation. You know, I read somewhere where they're going to put all 37 Shakespeare's plays on PBS. Yeah, sure. If they were any good, they'd be on real television. Ah, sh Good evening. My name is Roger de Swans, and tonight it is our pleasure to welcome you to yet another Mr. Peace Theater. Tonight our muse dons the comic buskin to tickle our risibilities with that timeless classic, The Importance of Being Earnest. Age cannot wither, nor custom stale the effervescent wit of that eternally young Turk of English letters, Oscar Wilde. Yet, subtle alterations in the tastes and hues of time's palette have rendered much of the Irish dramatist's vocabulary virtually inaccessible to the average contemporary Yank. In our wisdom, we have selected to present this gem of laughter's diadem suitably captioned for an American audience. You can take a seat, Mr. Worthing. Thank you, Lady Bracknell. I prefer standing. I feel bound to tell you that you are not down on my list of eligible young men. However, I am perfectly willing to enter your name should your answers be what an really affectionate mother requires. Do you smoke? Well, yes, I must admit I smoke. Oh, well, I am glad to hear it. A man should always have an occupation of some kind. There are far too many idle men in London as it is. How old are you? Twenty-nine. Oh, oh yeah, very good age to get married at. I've always been of the opinion that a man who desires to get married should know either everything or nothing. Which do you know? I know nothing, Lady Bracknell. I am pleased to hear it. I do not approve of anything that tampers with natural ignorance. The whole theory of modern education is radically unsound. Fortunately, in England,
England, at any rate. Education produces no effect whatsoever. If it did, it would prove a serious danger to the upper classes and probably lead to acts of violence in Grosvenor Square. What is your income? Between seven and eight thousand a year. In land or investments? Investments, chiefly. Ah, that is satisfactory. What between the duties expected of one during one's lifetime and the duties exacted from one after one's death, land has ceased to be either a profit or a pleasure. Well, since the British Broadcasting Corporation, or BBC, traditionally sends us tapes that are seven minutes too short, we now present our weekly Edwardian Music Hall rubbish. I'm an Irishman, I am, I am, and I'm full of Irish blues. And if you don't like my Irish song, I'll throw up on your shoes. Oh, Jesus, Joxer, I'm so drunken. I can't even remember my old name. Well, be giving us a hint, won't you? Well, it, 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 it sounds a bit like a fart in a bathtub. Sure. That'll be O'Donoghue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Irish man, I am, I am, and I'm full of Irish booze. And if you don't like my Irish song, I'll throw up on your shoes. I'm an Irish man, I am, I am, and I'm full of Irish at you paddies. I... But, but, but we're the Spud Brothers. Yeah. Well, it's English music or music we want, and that's what we'll bloody well get. Now, I go on, put... bugger off. Right, don't. Oi, I hear you're kings of queen. Come on. We're the Spud Brothers. I'll right, bomb your knees, you bleeding prot. Go on. <clears throat> bloody potatoes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome, please, the Liverpool Lily, the musical Merseyside mermaid. I give you your own Miss. Rosie McGonagall! A wealthy titled magistrate seduced upon the bank. A poor but honest working girl. A toothsome, winsome wench. Would you like me to dress for you like that, lady? Better you than me. In a wicked way. <laughs> and as the lad was doing so, the jury heard a Is that all you ever uh, <laughs> think of that? Oh, sweetheart. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. 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 Hey, there's the beaver. Who changed the channel? Oh, Christ. Is something wrong with this set? You guys make me puke. And it's like really fizzy, like it's too fizzy, I couldn't swallow it, you know? Oh, great, Dragula again. Excuse me, please. Could you tell me this fuck off? Thank you very much. I think I'll go wash my hair. What did I say, huh? Just tell me that much. What did I say now? Forget it. Forget it. You didn't say anything. <laughs> Me and the Sidewinders are going to take a little break now. We're going to give you all a chance to go slosh down some of that good old black Sidebuster beer. Yeah! 
And we're going to be back sooner than you're going to see. Waitress, where the hell is my drink? <laughs> Absolutely smashing. You know, I've been researching the Luke and Back tapes of Jerry Jeff Walker for BBC Two. Now, he has some really heavy sidemen. But frankly, I think that Simmons and Slewfoot far more validly epitomize Kretzmeck's shit-kicking funk. I think he's super. He's just super. He's super. He's really just super. That's all there is to it. It's an amalgam of rockabilly and redneck. I'd say, despite the fact that Simmons seems to be your classic wet back beaner. I find this musical category partakes of the, the mainstream flowing from the Appalachian motherload of down-home white blues yodel. Well, I think you put it in a nutshell, thank you. Oh. Yeah, very good. Now, seven seconds left. The part of your body your baby needs most. Contestants win the exciting 1979 model Austerlitz Power Pack Blender Trash Compactor. Express game guests stay at the stunning Casa del Muerte Motor Inn between two indoor pool tables. Our producers divorce arranged by Owen and Epstein, solicitors to the stars, where you can rent justice by the hour. We move now to our wacky mixed up bodies board. Careful now, Dolores. What have Eleanor and Raquel gotten mixed up? <laughs> Exciting home board version of our breast game. You must be over 21. That's it for the breast game for today. Stay tuned, boy. You bet your ass. So if you have to take a bathroom break, now is the time to do it. Okay, honey. I've switched back to cable. Maybe there'll be something nice and educational on. Okay? Please turn around. Pretty please.
must be something wrong with this set. I think the whole thing, I guess... Oh, sort of I don't want to watch to this. Really she, she never blinks. When I had this dream. Well, find a commercial. I'm going to get something to eat. Hi, I'm an expert, and I can cure homosexuality in just ten days with my miraculous homo-no-mo macho-building course. Do you find you don't fit in with the rest of the gang? Do tough guys make high, funny sounds in the back of their throats when you walk in the room? Do you wear your wristwatch backwards or carry your books money? Are you careful with your parents' car and polite to policemen? Do you ever look at mucus on your finger? If you've answered yes to none or more of these questions, then chances are you are a homosexual. Gee, Ted, I'd love to go to the sophomore bounce with you, but you carry your books funny, and I see you've got your watch on backwards. Gosh, Ted, I could not help overhearing that incredible put-down. Maybe your problem is homosexuality. Gee, Butch, what's that? Don't ask, Ted. But thanks to my amazing, miraculous, macho building course, you can be cured forever. Look at these results in just ten days. Take that, you beatnik. <gasps> like, ow! <gasps> what a man! Finish her off, Ted! <laughs> So write to me, expert, homo no mo, 635 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. That's expert, homo no mo, 635 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. That's expert, homo no mo, 635 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. That's expert, homo no mo, 635 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. And then this friend of mine comes over and she says to me, hey, let's jog, you know, so I guess my head was really fucked up by now with, uh, you know, Perrier and all the salads and everything, so I just said, okay, fine, let's jog, you know, and like, so I'm doing five miles a day, right, you know, and then like I just said, okay, hey, ten, why not ten, why not, hi, huh? you know, so like, I mean, I don't know, you know what I'm, ta I'm talking about? sweatsuits i'm talking about headbands i'm talking about a lot of very expensive running shoes and in fact the ones that i like the best are like the little nike road runners you know the ones that look like little sports cars and then there was well there was all these subscriptions to the magazines too i had to get uh, to new york new west new times high times outside apartment life you know and i'm living in a van so I was up to about, I think I'm into like about this time, I'm into about a, a case. Yeah, I'm already up to about a case a day, but this time. And I knew that I was in a lot of trouble, you know, but I didn't really know what to do about it. It was not easy. And I mean, you just can't stop, you know, you can't. And like, I had one good friend that came through and she said to me, God, you know, I wish you'd go with me to these meetings. I really, really wish you would. And I said, okay, I'm yours. I'm ready. Okay, okay, okay. And I got to tell you something. She really, she really saved it for me. Because if it wasn't for her, I, I would never have found Jesus. Praise the Lord.
excuse me, please? Could you tell me the time? No, I can't, but uh, here's the time. Why don't you use the phone? Yes, thank you. Get your big baby. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're back to be back. The boys and I are going to do an old Lefty Frizzell song for you right now. Cowboys, they love rhinestones Of whips or guns or ropes Some cowboys love a drunken bar and brawl but When it comes to sitting yeah. On the campfire yeah. on the prairie yeah. That's when cowboys love cowboys best of all Yes, cowboys love cowboys More than boots or beans or booze And you all know that's the reason Even cowgirls get the blues Let's do it again You ever thought of making it with a guy? Yes, cowboys love cowboys No, I mean it I mean, like late at night at the office, you know, just you and Peter and somebody sitting there, and you're really loaded and tired. Never. Cut it out. Oh. I hit a sore spot on that one, didn't I? Uh, well, have you ever uh, made it with a girl? Mm. I'm not helping. Change it before the commercial. Excuse me, please. Could you tell me the time? Or should I just fuck off? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I should like very much for you to meet my little friends. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am fine. You are okay? I am okay. What is your name? I am Doreen. What is your name, big boy? I am Senior Wenchus. You want to have a good time? A good time? Yes, a good time. Uh, I like a good time. You give me $20, I give you a good time. $20? $20. Very difficult. Easy. Difficult. Easy. What I get for $20? The best hand job in the whole world. Hand job? Hand job. $20 is too much. I make you get off like a rocket. Too much. That's right. Too much. That's right. Forget it. Faggot. Go away. I bet you have a little pee-pee. Go away. You want to get off sniffing a bicycle seat? Go away. Hello, Jackie. Hello. How are you? I am okay. You are okay? Okay. You are fine? I am very hungry. Hungry? Yes, but I cannot keep anything down. That's okay. He can't keep anything up. Is it okay now? See, but I need some money. You need money? Money, see. Money? See, I need two million dollars. You want to sing? Sure. Okay? Okay. Why don't you sing I Ain't Got Nobody? Quiet. We sing? Yes, we sing Row, Row, Row the Boat, okay? Okay. Row, Row, Row the you Boat. boat. Gently down the stream. I make you very merry, you cheap wet back. It's okay? Okay, okay. Easy, 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 easy. Oh my god, oh my you god. Two million dollars, I sing Camelot. Oh, the Red Wedgies, my favorite movie. Oh, you've seen it a million times. Hey, there's the beaver again. In a crevice of the gray stone canyon of the city, the beaver sees a tower of food surrounded by a moat of ice. But alas, it is too heavily guarded for the beaver to approach. Mira, that's a 
Tom Beamer. But even beavers cannot live on pencils alone. He searches for his own kind, for companionship in the neon loneliness of the big city. Night falls, and the beaver finds at last a morsel of nourishment beside a raging river of steel. Juliet, uh, and we're not watching that movie again. Oh, God, look how young she looks. On Oh. The sky was gray, but in the heart it was sunny. They gazed across. Go back. The general's part's my favorite. No, 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 336 no, the time. Unassisted. Are you going to watch this hockey? Yeah. Thank you. He broke his nose 13 times. Is that an NHL record? He broke his record? nose 13 Certainly times. Is. You can watch something this violent? In it's interesting. Thing. The fourteenth time was when he accidentally stepped on one of his lawnmowers and the it 14th came up time. and hit him in the nose. That was the fourteenth, but that doesn't count. Oh, that doesn't count. Well, she was so gorgeous. Just look at that face. Oh. Oh. I will watch neither one. This man is sick. He's suffering from a disease which no one talks about, but everyone has heard of. A disease which strikes one out of three Americans. A disease for which there is no known cure. With your help, we can lick this killer illness. Terminal flatulence, TF. Sometimes silent, oh. always deadly. Send your contributions to the TF Foundation, Los Alamos, New Mexico. TF, it's not to be sniffed at. There's a problem on my mind And I find it hard to find Someone to explain to me Something of a mystery Concerning an important friend of mine Certainly there's truth in it In other words, it's true this sad and sorry incident I shall explain to you. God is dead, so they say. He's been dead several days. How he died, no one knows. No one cares where he went. At the end, not a friend. He was never the popular type, I suppose. He forgave. And they forgot. Now he's dead. No, I'm not. Wild affair. Play behind that Islander. No. no. Kissed and licked. One by one, the pillars of Manhattan wilt beneath the onslaught of the caped.
cruiser until but one must steer and stones between the heinous hemoglobin and her final triumph. Memo to the publisher from Lucy Murray, editor-in-chief, Real Balls Magazine, Ray Circulation Drop. Boss, what can I tell you? Sales are way down again this month. Looks like all of a sudden nobody's buying the old tits and ass blood and guts formula. Please advise. You getting all this down, Babs? Every last bit of it, Lou. Thanks, honey. Uh, oh, Lou, um, there was someone here to see you, and, um, well, he didn't give his name. <gasps> My star! What an adorable ambiance. Early macho. Listen, I'm a busy man. I just bet you are, big fella. Say, I saw you on the Cabot show last night and you were terrific. And I couldn't agree more with your views on censorship. Well, I think a free press. But listen, Lou, darling, word on the street is that your Maggie Poo is going down the toity, readership-wise. Get with it, Lou. Catch up with getting behind where it's at. I'm talking market penetration. Today, Real men dig real men. Can you get into bed with the bottom line on that? Real men. Real men. Say, you're a real straight talker, pal. Straight? Moi. Tell me something. You know a lot about men? Well, I know what I like. Maybe we could cut some kind of consultancy deal. I can see it now. Sure. Get some male models, lots of, lots of spreads, uh, fashion spreads, rough tweeds, gold chains, kid driving gloves, colognes, lifestyles, a gourmet cooking column, some football pinups, you know, real men for real men. How's that sound to you? Wonderful. Great, I'll have my secretary work on it and I'll get back to you in the middle of the week. That good? Oh, it sounds delicious. Au revoir. Beautiful. I could use a drink. Babs, you want to bring me in the usual, please? On second thought, make it a dry sack on the rocks. Professor Van Helsing, thank God you've come. Call me Vanessa. Professor Vanessa Van Helsing, thank God you've come. No, never mind. Now, that seems to be the problem. It's Lou. He's, I don't know, he's acting sort of queer. <laughs> Queer, you say? No, queer. Lead me to him. Lou? You remember Professor Van Helsing, don't you? She does our sexology column every month. I think she can help you. Mr. Murray, there's nothing wrong with me. Mr. Murray. What's the matter with your wrist? <laughs> it won't go up. I can't get it up. Plus, help me get him to the couch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Get my dry sack. Get my dry sack. This is worse than even I had feared. Oh, Professor, what can I do? There isn't anything I wouldn't do for Lou. So I've heard. Mr. Murray, you are the victim of Dragula, queen of darkness. Dragula is no fairy tale, but a real flesh and blood hemosexualist whose touch, whose kiss is the cause of all the evil that's plaguing this city. Babs, get over there. Open my bag. In it, you'll find some family-style meatloaf. Please begin by hanging it around all the doors and the windows of this office. Mr. Murray, you must do exactly as I tell you. Jesus, what a stink. Exactly, but Dragula cannot stand it. And even more than that, she is repelled by the great smell of brute. Oh. By pictures of Lloyd Burgess. Oh. By breakfast nooks. Not nooks, Not too. this will keep her away. And it may even save you yet from a fate that's worse than death. No. I'll ask you to wear it. I won't wear it's it. It's a cheap charm bracelet from Woolworths. We put it on your wrist. So, it clashes. Now, there's one last thing that we can do to ward away this mistress of the evil powers of darkness. 
What the hell's that? A beaver. Yes, my friend, even more than she cannot stand family-style meatloaf, this great smell of brute breakfast, nooks, pitches, alloyed bridges, and cheap charm braces. She cannot stand the sight of beaver. That's a brave fellow. Well, perhaps. All done, Professor. Good. We have work to do. Mr. Murray, keep that door locked. I'll be nothing for nobody, you understand? Now, perhaps. We must track down Her Majesty in her evil lair. Hell is driving me crazy. Oh, meatloaf. There's not even any ketchup. There. Oh. No, no, it's you. Well, who are you expecting, Cookie? Dick Caver. No, no, I can't take it. I can't. I bet you can. Little D wants his midnight snacky pool. Oh! This says to you, Gary Gobbler. <laughs> Why, Mids Van Helsing. Time you came out lovely. All right, you sugar from fairy, get a look. Ah! <laughs> You're easy enough. Ah! Cut me, Kurt. Ah! Oh, meatloaf. Oh! Lloyd Wiggins. He has no The great smell of food. Oh, oh, oh! Madame, oh, it's jammed. You're queen. Queen, darling. Queen. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no. Viva! No. Viva! 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 And so the curse of Dragula is lifted and vanishes like some loathsome lavender mist. Thus is the world made safe once more for the harmless heterosexual majority, thanks to the well-known miraculous intervention of that prince of extraterrestrial rodents, the Disco Beaver from outer space.
Dingue, meu irmão. 